All right, so we just finished WWDC 18. Let's get all your questions over with right from the beginning. There's no new hardware, okay? No air power, no iPad Pro, no iPhone SE, and no more happiness because the keynote about software should have had more hardware. I agree, I'm disappointed. I would have at least wanted to see a CPU and GPU upgrade for the iMac and MacBooks. They couldn't even do that. All we really got was some new watch bands and some new phone cases, but yes, I guess it's fair to say that WWDC is primarily about software. We probably got our hopes a little bit too high, but I'm gonna try to see my best in this. I'm gonna try to stay positive because I think the software updates we did get are quite exciting and quite interesting. So without further ado, let's recap all the most interesting parts of WWDC. 18. Starting, of course, with iOS 12. The good news is that our leaks about it working all the way back to devices from 2013 is true. You'll be able to put iOS 12 on your iPhone 5S. That phone is getting six years of support. Something you're not gonna get with Android and something you guys should keep in mind when you're deciding what kind of phone you wanna buy. Which phone is going to get software updates and performance enhancements as iOS 12 is saying that turning on apps, animations will be much, much faster now with iOS 12 on older iPhones like the iPhone 6 Plus or the iPhone 5S, speed overall is supposedly getting much, much faster. But now for everyone else, iOS 12 includes AR Kit 2, which allows two separate devices to be seeing the same augmented reality simulations. They demoed this with some cool Lego bricks and turn it into its own AR game, which I found pretty impressive. And then they moved into Siri shortcuts, which means that just by giving one command, you can customize Siri to do four or five different things just by saying whatever you want. So you can say, I'm heading home and have it text someone and open up a certain Apple Maps navigation while starting to play a certain radio and putting you in do not disturb while driving mode all from just one command. So Siri is probably not getting the type of intelligence that Google Assistant has where you can just ask it random questions, but it's giving more options and power to the user so that you don't have to use Siri very much. You can just say one thing and she knows exactly what to do with lots of different amounts of customization through this new app Siri shortcuts. They redesigned the Apple Stocks app and now have Apple News built in so that news articles related to stocks are right there in your Stocks app. They also brought stocks and voice memos to the iPad, thankfully. Still not sure if Weather or Calculator are on iPad, but they should be. They redesigned the Voice Memos app to be a bit more clean, and they renamed iBooks to simply Books and redesigned the app itself so that the UI is a bit more tidy and the books that you're reading are left off exactly where you want them to when you open books. And they also, similar to Android P, built in a lot of options to prevent you from using your phone too much. By giving you an overview of how much time you spend on each app, weekly summaries as to how much time you spend on your phone, phone and even setting timers for how long you use each app and it'll notify you if you're using an app more than you had previously established you would like to. Yes, this is very similar to Android dashboard, no doubt. However, Android P is not going to be going to a lot of people. iOS 12, however, is available for any iOS user who bought a phone now all the way back from 2013. That's a very large percentage of people that are going to be getting these updates, whereas Android P is mostly going to be on the Pixel and that's about it. Given that Android Oreo is over a year old now and it's only on 6% of Android devices. Apple docked them heavily for this. They also have more do not disturb options built into control center, an option so that when you go to sleep, you don't wake up and have a ton of notifications. It will stack them all up for a cleaner UI. And they finally listened to us and started grouping notifications together. And you can act on them and say, I don't want notifications from this app, or I don't want as much notifications from this app. Or if you get a bunch, they'll stack them all together so that your lock screen should look much, much cleaner than it did with iOS 11. This was a heavily requested feature. I'm very glad Apple saw this and acted on it. They're all also given us some new and emojis, of course, and tongue tracking support, which surprisingly with the iPhone 10 actually was a heavily criticized complaint. People are making weird faces, but the face ID can't track my tongue. What's the problem? Either way, it's fixed now. You can also use an emoji with the selfie camera app now or during FaceTime. You can make your own an emojis, which they called meme emojis, so that you can make yourself look exactly how you want as an animated character and use that animated character in FaceTime calls. So basically they were like, hey, what if AR emoji wasn't just disturbing and creepy. Let's do that. I don't want to hear people saying that they copied this from Samsung because Samsung clearly directly copied it from Apple and it's okay to copy other companies. Just do it well. They didn't even do it well. But speaking of FaceTime, they're adding group FaceTime so that you can be on the phone with lots of different people at the same time. Up to 32 in fact. The people who are talking and taking the spotlight, their face will appear bigger with all these little chat bubbles. And I can't imagine having a FaceTime call with 32 people, but you can with iOS 12. And by the way, group FaceTime's 
still works on your Mac and with audio on your Apple Watch. So coming to iOS 12 and also the rest of the ecosystem. So now moving on to watchOS 5, we have a bit of sad news. This is the first operating system that will not be coming to every Apple Watch. Apple's finally stopped supporting the OG Apple Watch Sport, the Series Zero, but kind of understandably because that watch has a very old CPU and from its origin, it had a very slow CPU. So it does not age well and the features they want out of watchOS 5 just simply can't happen with a watch that old with a CPU that slow. However, if you have a Series 1 and up, it should work fine. And they're now adding activity challenges. So if you want to challenge someone who also has an Apple Watch, you can pick a workout or a number of calories and decide whoever works the hardest or whoever burns the most calories, they win this award. So you can be a bit more competitive with how you close your rings. And they're also adding automatic workout detection. So if the watch detects that you're going on a run or a walk, it'll go ahead and open the workout app and say, let's start a workout. And it will notice when you stop working out as well. So you can go ahead and tap done without having to go to your home screen, go to the workouts app or asking Siri to do one, just saving a bit more steps, not walking steps, just, you know, using the what, whatever. They're also adding this new way of communicating called walkie talkie, which means you'll very easily be able to send little audio messages to other people with Apple watches and they can set it so they have to confirm it or they just want it to pop out of their watch while they're doing something casual. That way, if someone just wants to say something really quick or ask if you're available, they can just use the walkie talkie feature, which works on cellular and Wi-Fi models and just a little fun, more creative way for you to communicate using a device that's very, very small. Also, they demoed that when you're using the Siri watch face, you're able to control Siri and give off certain Siri commands without having to say, hello, Siri, which I found really interesting. It just contextually knows when to act based on what it's hearing in the room. I'm not really sure how that's gonna work because when I use Siri on my watch, it overrides the Siri skills of my HomePod. So really not sure how that's gonna work with the watch, but I'm curious to see how it works. Now, when people text you web links, you know, before you weren't able to open them on your watch. Now, if someone texts you a web link, it will default to reader mode and you'll be able to read that web website or look at a preview of that website from your Apple Watch without having to take your phone out of your pocket. Again, saving more steps. And they finally listened to us and watched our video and decided, you know what? Podcasts should be on the Apple Watch. So they did that. You can now listen to podcasts on cellular mode. If you're off for a run and you don't have your phone with you, the podcast app is on watchOS 5. Thank you, Apple, for listening. And just like iOS 12 with grouped notifications, they also group notifications on your Apple Watch. So if you get a bunch of texts from someone, you don't have to be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling through all of them. It will stack them up and you can collapse them if you want to look at the details. And they ended off watchOS 5 by saying that you'll be able to rearrange the settings in your control center section of your Apple Watch and rearrange those tabs, which I'm very thankful to do because it doesn't make sense to me that do not disturb and ping are right next to each other. I'm trying to get my phone to be quiet and then I accidentally make it make the loudest noise ever. Those two things need to be separated. They should be far away from each other. So I'm glad they're allowing you to update that. And before I go too far, I'm actually just getting new information that was not talked about in the keynote. With iOS 12 on the iPads, you have more gesture controls like an iPhone 10. Control center is in the top right now and you can swipe up to go home. Probably because there were a lot of people saying that they're used to the gestures of their iPhone 10 and when they switch up to an iPad, the gestures suddenly mean different things. So with iOS 12, they make this more universal. Then they talked about tvOS and there really wasn't much happening. It's got Dolby Atmos support now if you have Dolby Atmos speakers or TV. Now when they're playing those aerial shots of screensavers, you can click to find out where this is and it will tell you what you're looking at. They're adding some new space shots so you can look from outer space with slight motion. And if you want to look at other screensavers that are available, you can swipe through them as they're happening, which right now they're just set to random, which is weird. But overall, tvOS is just getting some screensaver updates and Dolby Atmos support, as well as the zero sign-on feature, which I have a hard time understanding. So if you have a cable TV package, it will just know by connecting to the Wi-Fi that you are signed up with this cable TV package and you don't have to log in anymore. As Apple likes to say, it just works. Then surprisingly, the biggest update I think of the keynote note is macOS Mojave, surprisingly getting a ton of graphical and functional updates. The first big one that we got with macOS Mojave that we sadly didn't get with iOS 12 is dark mode. Finder, Safari, the dock, even the trash can now have a completely different UI for being easier on the eyes with a darker user interface, which looks really, really cool. They're also introducing a dynamic wallpaper, which means that the background, the desktop of your computer will change slightly as the day goes on. If it's nighttime, that picture will be at night. If it's morning, that picture will be in the morning lighting. I'm definitely turning that on. That looks great. The other good news we just found out about macOS Mojave is that it basically works on any Mac that was made in 2010 and up. Even a couple of Macs from 2009. That's near 10 years of operating system support. And the great thing about macOS are these updates are consensual. Unlike Windows 10, which may update when you turn it on, whether you wanted it to or not. If you want Mojave, you can have it. If you don't, you can just keep using the one you got. They also introduced desktop stack. So if you have a very cluttered desktop, as many people do, you can hit clean up 
by stacks and it will take all the pictures and put them in one single stack it'll take all the videos and put them in one single stack files documents it'll put in one stack and it'll really clean up your desktop with one easy step they also updated the gallery view option when you're looking through your files so that it's a bit more of a clean ui and like ios you'll be able to do little quick actions on them so that you can rotate them crop them i'm especially liking that if you're on mac os and you're watching a video just like ios you'll be able to crop it in if you want to instead of having to open iMovie just to crop a single video or open Photoshop just to rotate a single picture. Luckily, they're building that all into Finder so that you can rotate pictures, crop them, mark them up, add signatures, just like you do on your phone. They improve continuity, which is really interesting. So if you're like working on a keynote project or working on a document, you can just right click and select take a picture and your phone will immediately open to the camera app. You take the picture that you need to take and that picture is immediately offloaded and added to the project, which works very, very seamlessly and shows off how capable the Apple ecosystem really is, especially with productivity. I like that it really happens in just two clicks. You hit take a picture and then phone camera just opens like magic. And then the picture is offloaded immediately once you take it. I think that's really, really neat. And there's a lot of instances in which I've wanted to be able to do that. They also were able to move a lot of iOS apps onto macOS. This includes the Apple News app, the Stocks app, the redesigned one, the Voice Memos app, which really wasn't on macOS before. And if you wanted to just do a simple recording, I guess you did have to like go into GarageBand or download some program. Now Voice Memos is just right there. And finally, the Home app. So you can control your HomeKit enabled devices, turning off lights and stuff like that through Siri on the Mac. You can finally control your smart home, which it was ridiculous that that wasn't there before. Why was Siri not universal with Mac OS? Luckily, they've thought of that. And now you have these four new iOS apps that run on your Mac. And that led them into talking about the future about Mac OS and iOS. And they very repeatedly said, we are not merging Mac OS and iOS. They are two different platforms that benefit when working together, but would not benefit if merged together. So they're making it easier for developers though to port over their iOS apps to the Mac App Store. And they said this is how they made the news app, the HomeKit app, the voice memos app. They ported all that over by making it easier for developers to move iOS apps to the Mac Store if they want to. And they'll be getting more features for that later into 2019, which means that there's a lot of cool iOS apps that may be ported onto macOS later. We'll see. And speaking of the Mac App Store, they redesigned the whole thing to make it look a lot more modern to where now I think it matches with the iOS 12 design scheme a lot better than the old Mac App Store did. And of course, supports the dark mode along with every other application on Mac OS. And then lastly, Safari now really cracks down on websites tracking your data. So there's websites out there that will track your information and try to put ads in front of you based on what you've looked for in the past. Safari is not having it. Safari's slapping all these companies in the face and saying, no more tracking. Users get privacy, which means they shouldn't have much of a data collection on you anymore if you use Safari. And I don't think you're getting that kind of security and privacy with any other browser, knowing how Google and Microsoft handle personal data. So a pretty massive change to the Mac OS lineup. I think a very welcome one to the iOS 12. Yes, I know it would have been cool to see dark mode come to iOS 12, but with them using it on Mac OS, I think that shows that they're at least experimenting with dark mode and we'll probably get that with iOS 13. And I'm sure that many tech YouTubers out there told you that iOS 12 was never made to be a user interface change. It was supposed to be about stability and perfecting things. And I think that's what they're focused on. Maybe next year we'll get a graphical interchange with iOS, but iOS 12 is definitely not the biggest change, but they definitely listen to a lot of people's requests between group FaceTime, group notifications, and managing your time on certain apps, as well as the AR kit tools, like adding this measurements app that allows you to measure literally anything you're looking at, which I thought was pretty dope. The Siri shortcuts, while they may not be like the Google Assistant, are going to give more power to the user and not just more knowledge, not just random factual stuff. I think Apple took the think different approach with Siri. How do we make Siri have more functional options and not just random factual knowledge? But overall, I completely understand people's disappointment. I am too. I really wanted to see new hardware. I was really interested in seeing iMacs with newer CPUs and GPUs. I was curious about maybe an iPad Pro or iPhone SE, but like I said, this is about software. We probably got spoiled with DC 17 last year and got accustomed to every keynote having hardware. This keynote is not really about consumer hardware. It's more about developer software and that's what they did. And I think in terms of the software updates, they're looking really, really good. And I'm excited to try all of these software updates. So instead of just telling me that you wanted a dark mode or you wanted an iPad. We all did. Okay, we're all disappointed. Why didn't you tell me what your favorite part was? What are you most looking forward to from all of the new stuff announced today? Let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.